Since last fall, we have charged 14 individuals connected to the same religious organization, the Jehovah Witnesses. The details of these cases that I will be talking about are incredibly disturbing. And all five men were members of the Jehovah Witness congregation. These cases were presented to an investigative grand jury, and the grand jurors heard the evidence, they heard testimony, they considered and weighed it, and they made a recommendation to charge all five defendants. First, David Belosa, 62, of Philadelphia. The second case, Earl William Hall, 50 years old, of Alden, Delaware County. The third case is Sean Sheffer, 45, of Butler County. The next case is Terry Booth, 57 years old, of Panama City, Florida. Louise Ala Velez Velezda, 55, of Reading. Hey there, this is Lady C. I just want to just come out and let you know that we're here um, hanging out, JT and I, back together on XJW Critical Thinker. JT has been off on vacation for a little while from the channel, and I've been working my magic on Hidden Struggles. I've been going back and forth with different topics, but my next set of series is going to be talking about some self-esteem issues. So if that sounds like you, head over and check me out, <laughs> okay? You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hey, this is JT. You know, I'm sure you, if you haven't heard yet about what's happening in the state of Pennsylvania or the CSA issues, it's really getting serious for the Watchtower now. Uh, just recently, it was announced that five individuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, have been arrested involved in CSA issues. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Watchtower plays this out. I mean, testing. Yeah. And you know what I find interesting about this whole thing is when, you know, we had been, you know, following some stories about the Watchtower mm -hmm. and how they had been educating Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes. And they had been telling the witnesses to not listen to anything, even on the news. Yeah. So if it doesn't come through JW.org, it's not true. It yeah. does not exist. If you go to the JW.org website and the news section, you will clearly see that the Jehovah's Witnesses make no mention of these CSA cases of these arrests of these individuals. In fact, if you comb down through the site, you will see no mention at all of any of the cases that involves CSA. And so this is going to be interesting because a lot of people that are still at the Kingdom Hall, they're not going to get this information. And even when they get it, they're going to think it's not correct. Yeah, that's so true. Um, the organization has basically been grooming its members uh, on how to deal with anything that comes from people who are considered apostates and even the news media. So um, this will just be viewed by Jehovah's Witnesses as they're just, Satan is just attacking us. So, you know, a lot of us, we will hear things like this. And for some people, this will be a wake-up call. But unfortunately, for the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, this will literally just go right over their head. And that's what makes the organization kind of unique because the organization kind of preps its members as to what to expect. So when it comes out, they can just say, oh, we knew about that. You know, this Satan is just out to get us. And so that's the problem you run into with issues like this. Yeah. And, and you know what, too, JT, when you think about what's happening, you know, this has been happening for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So we all know that the CSA issue, people being arrested, you know, is nothing new. And the ex Jehovah's yeah. Witness community, you know, we've been covering these topics for a while now. We've been on live streams with Mark O'Donnell and things like that, talking about what's going on, what's coming down the pipe. And of course, you know, they're going through the whole state of Pennsylvania, um, you know, going through all these different kingdom halls. And you know, trying to get this information, uh, or trying to report this information, and the sad thing about it is, Jehovah's Witnesses for so many years were always told 
that the Catholic Church oh, yeah. was such a bad, you know, place to be, and you know their 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 leadership was bad, and talking about their child sex abuse cases and things like that, and come to find out, they're no different. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's very it's, it's very unfortunate when you consider that um, the organization, as they say, will point the finger at others, but <laughs> but then when the finger points back, it's a whole different story. And uh, so it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, this particular uh, uh, law enforcement officer, she gave a news briefing and she went into great detail. Uh, the five individuals who were arrested, who were charged, indicted. And of course, we'll see how this turns out in the court system. Uh, only time will tell. If anything, for the people who came forward, uh, they at least, uh, we don't know if if they will get full justice or not, because we know we live in a world where you may not always get full justice. But we do know one thing is that these people got the opportunity for someone to hear their story. And so we invite you to listen carefully as the district attorney uh, who is prosecuting these cases, as she goes into detail about, in fact, we were kind of concerned in terms of how uh, YouTube would play it back uh, because of some of the language that's used. So we invite you to to take a look at the link that we provided below so that you can hear it for yourself exactly what the charges are uh, as young as four years old. So, I mean, this is, and, and of course, we know that the organization, uh, because the way it's structured, the secrecy, the two witness rule, it makes it very, very difficult for people to be able to seek justice many times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, but you know what? When, when I um got the link and, and I was getting ready to listen to this press conference mm -hmm. and I was you know, reading over the documents and stuff. And I was saying, when she was talking about how it went back several decades, mm -hmm. it was a couple of things that I thought was going to be coming to the forefront. Number one, I thought it was going to be elders that presided over the case and they were being brought to justice, but it was actually the actual perpetrators themselves. Yeah. The other thing that I thought was going to be taking place was we were going to be hearing about brothers that were like, 80 plus years old, but we're finding that that's not the case. Yeah. You know, some people were as young as like what, 45, 50 years old. Yeah. These were not men yeah. who were in their eighties and nineties ready to, ready to die. As <laughs> right. Were. These were, these were. And so when you consider uh, the age of these individuals, um, and of course, as, as we, uh, we will see uh, as this case develops, what role the congregation plays in. And because we're so familiar with the basic policies and the rules of judicial meetings, well, we have a general idea of how these cases were handled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it just goes to show that there is, like you said, um, there people you're looking for justice. But I think mm -hmm. just the fact that the case was even brought up yeah. and brought into the court and charges were filed, yeah. that shows that there's progress being made. And the other thing that I find to be so interesting about this is the fact that all of these people had access to these children, to these minors. If it wasn't for the fact that they were living in the house with them, it was due to their position. Because one of the things that's so dangerous about this religion is the watchtower always tries to say that if a person is baptized, if they have a position of authority, they are trustworthy. Oh yeah, and, and that's what that's what sets up the the the, the, the circumstances. We 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 trust these individuals. Well, we call well we call each other brothers and sisters. So you're not gonna question your brother or sister, and as a result, it ends up setting up scenarios. But as with so many of these issues, uh, we know that in any organization, you will have people who may have uh, these types of uh, uh, issues in their life. Uh, the question is, what happens when others become aware of it? And that's where the real problem comes in at. Um, you, you can expect that people are going to have issues, but what about all the other people who may be aware of it? What do they do? And that's where uh, these types of cases with organizations such as churches and the Boy Scout, that's where the question really comes up is what do organizations who are aware of this? And we know the Watchtower has a very secretive arrangement in terms of the judicial issues and how they're handled. And so these are issues that, that could have been known in the congregation for decades, but it was simply kept quiet. And I thought it was interesting that as, as the, uh, at the press conference, they made the point that it's because these cases are now coming up that people are now feeling comfortable coming forward. And that's really important. 
when people see that they're not alone. And that's really the whole thing. They're not alone. Absolutely. And not only that, but when I was reading the article in the um, newspaper, it was talking about how the Watchtower was looking at these cases as a sin and not a crime. And that was one of the you know worst things that could be happening, too, because th you know these are things that they're handling in-house and saying that we're not going to go and turn these people in and making people feel like they were going to be committing a crime if they went to the authorities themselves, because everyone knows how you don't want to look different. Everybody knows how you are looked at when you're going against the organization oh, yeah. Yeah. and what yeah. they're trying to say oh, yeah. and how you should follow their, you know, their, their protocol. Cause right. everything is about, we don't want to bring a bad reproach on Jehovah's name when really it's, the organization. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Protect the brand. <laughs> right. Protect the brand. Yeah. Right. So we just wanted to take this opportunity to, 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 to share our thoughts on this issue. Uh, we know this is so important to so many of us. Uh, we have worked with people. We all know people. Perhaps we've talked to people. Uh, we read about people's stories. We see the experiences that are given on so many channels of people relating this type of issue. So we'll leave the link below and we invite you take the time. If you have not heard, this press conference that was given and listen to exactly how it is described in terms of what these individuals did. This has been JT. And this has been Lady C. Take care of yourself. And we'll see you on the next episode. All right. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.